Let us pray. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore Him. Angels bow before Him. What a mighty God we serve. We are serving Him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore, even angels bow before Him. What a mighty God we serve. Father, we love you. We love you because you are the Almighty. We love you because you are higher than the highest. You are greater than the greatest. You are stronger than the strongest. You are wiser than the wisest. Oh, there's no one like you. We are proud of you. It's a pleasure being called your children. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We are here again this morning, Lord. In your own miraculous way, visit us. Bless us. Take us higher. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, why don't you wave to two or three people and say, Good morning. God bless you. <clears throat> well, we'll continue with our series going higher. And we now move on to part 18. And our text this time will be 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Go show yourself unto Ahab, and I will send the rain upon the earth. <coughs> Going higher. Part 18. There are at least two ways that we could look at this verse. One is prophetic, and the other is on a deeper level. We will look at the prophetic this Sunday. And by the grace of God, we'll come back here and look at, uh, and look, take a, a little deeper level look at uh, this particular passage. Go show thyself unto Ahab. God is saying to Elijah, no more hiding. And I want to prophesy to somebody. In the name that's above every other name, from today onward, you will no longer be hidden. Amen. No more hiding. You see, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8, the Bible says, God has a timetable for everything. 
everything. And so in Psalm 102 verse 13, Psalm 102 verse 13, the Bible says, Thou will arise and have mercy on Zion. Because the time to favor her, yea, the set time has come. The Almighty God has a timetable concerning your life. It's a time for hiding. But he's saying from now on, no more hiding. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11, the Bible tells us that God has made everything beautiful in his time. Everything beautiful in his time. With confidence I can prophesy to someone that from now on, everything about you will be beautiful. Amen. I mean, when you read Exodus chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15, Exodus 3 from verse 1 to 15, Moses had been a fugitive for 40 years, hiding. Then the set time came, and God said, hey, You've been running from Pharaoh. Now go, go and show yourself to Pharaoh. No more hiding. When you read Judges chapter 6 from verse 1 to 16, Judges 6 from verse 1 to 16, you will discover that Gideon was hiding from the enemy. When God appeared to him, I said, Gideon, no more hiding. <laughs> One could almost say that a subtitle for this particular passage will be no more hiding. No more hiding. Why was God saying to Elijah, no more hiding? Oh, Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19 from verse 12 to 26. Luke 19 from verse 12 to 26. The Bible says, when you have been faithful in little, then God will give you authority over much. When God is promoting you, he will start you at a small level, give you little, little assignments to do for him, to check your faithfulness. Go and hide in Cherith. Yes, Lord. Now go and stay with a widow. Yes, Lord. Uh, then the fire came when the son died. And he went through it. And God said, all right now, son. No more hiding. You know, in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, Isaiah 60 verse 1, the Bible says, arise and shine. For your light has come. Oh, I rejoice with whoever this message is for. No more hiding. Yeah. Mm, no more hiding. Several years ago, some people came from abroad. They saw the work that God was doing here. And that was, that was three years ago. And they said, how come we never heard about what's going on here? That people abroad, with less than 10% of what God is doing here, they, they, they are, their noise won't let people rest. And you have kept quiet about what is going on here. I told them, I said, my father told me when I was young, when you are lighting a flame in the jungle, a little flame, you shield it with your hands so that the wind won't blow it out. When the flame grows, it is the flame that will drive away your hand, and there will be no more hiding. In the name that's above every other name, your light now will begin to shine. Amen. Not only did he say no more hiding, he's saying no more running from the enemy. 
Mm. You'll be hiding. You'll be running from Ahab. Now go and meet him. <laughs> go and show yourself to him. Ah, this is serious. God, you, I'm sure you know what you are saying because <laughs> this fellow has been looking for me to kill me. That's why I've been running from Cherry to Zarephath. God said, no more running. You know, I've told you, according to Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 to 18, Ephesians 6, 10 to 18, there is no armor for your back. God has an armor for your chest, an armor for your head, an armor for your belly, for your legs, for your feet. But there is no armor for your back. Why? Because you are not meant to run from the enemy. And according to James chapter 4 verse 7, James chapter 4 verse 7 the Bible says, if only you will submit yourself to God, you resist the devil and he will flee from you. No more running from the enemy. In 1 Peter chapter 5, from verse 8 to 9, 1 Peter 5, verse 8 to 9, the Bible says you have to resist the devil steadfastly. No more running. When you read 4 Samuel chapter 17 from verse 34 to 51, 4 Samuel 17, 34 to 51, written, If God be for us, who can be against us? It is clearly written, We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Oh, God is backing you up, and some enemies want to stand in your way. Ah, the Bible says, let God arise, and his enemies will scatter. Uh, after some of you know my testimony. There was a misunderstanding between my daddy and his peers in the family compound. And they, they, they told him, because he said he wasn't going to do what they were asking him to do because of me. I was then in the grammar school in the final year. And he said, let my son finish his secondary school and then I will do what you said. And they told him, we will see how old your son will get before he dies. And he knew what that one meant. <laughs> it means I was to die soon. Came home, told my mom what, what happened in the meeting. My mom took me that night. I mean that night. <laughs> and we fled. For 13 years, I was fleeing. And then I met Jesus Christ. He saved my soul. And suddenly I knew. No more running. From that time till now, I don't run from the enemy. I decree from this hour onward when the enemy see you coming they will run no more running and then God added something he said I will send rain I like that that's very beautiful no more hiding no more running and rain is coming. In Joel chapter 2, verse 23, Joel chapter 2, verse 23, the Almighty God promised us rain. The latter rain and the former rain. And he said he can bring both of them the same month. You know what? I think based on that alone, I can confidently prophesy that for someone in particular, an overwhelming breakthrough will come this month. Yeah. 
Now when he said I will send the rain, that rain could be material. Because when you read Psalm 78 from verse 24 to 27, Psalm 78 from verse 24 to 27, the Bible says God rained down manna from heaven. He rained down flesh as dust. It could be divine provision coming as rain. When you read Proverbs chapter 16, verse 15, Proverbs 16, verse 15, that rain that God says is coming could be divine favor. And if God should decide to rain favor on you, oh, <laughs> then you've got it made. Because like uh, I'm sure we've learned in the past when we talk about favor. Favor enables you to enjoy blessings without laboring. Because we were comparing two people. Jacob. He labored for 14 years before he could marry the girl he loved. In the case of Isaac, he just went for a stroll <laughs> and came home with a wife. That's the difference between laboring and favor. Isaac didn't even know that his father had made some special arrangements for a wife. He just went for a stroll and saw somebody coming. Who is that? They say, it's your wife. He said, is that so? <laughs> Whereas somebody struggled for 14 years. Uh, I pray for every one of you, my children, God will rain favor on you. Amen. That rain that is coming could be fruitfulness or satisfaction. You say, how, how come? Amos chapter 4 from verse 7 to 8, Amos 4, from verse 7 to 8, he says, God can rain on one city and leave another city dry. He so this, the city he rained on, upon will be fruitful. The city he didn't rain upon will dry up. And then those who didn't get the rain will then be going to those who got the rain for fruits, for food, for water to drink. When God said, I will send the rain, he could be saying, there will be abundance of fruitfulness. He could say, I'm going to make you satisfied. You know, God can bless you until you say to God, please, Lord, this is enough. <laughs> I don't want any more. Thank you. I mean, I told you the story of uh, the man who, who, who couldn't marry until well over 50. And then finally he gave his life to Jesus Christ and he got married. Because people were thinking that he was impotent. And the first time the wife was going to give birth, it was a set of twins. Two years later, another set of twins. I had to say to him, gently, gently. Oh. <laughs> that kind of rain of blessings, showers of blessings, that will cause you to say, God, thank you, I am satisfied. May it come upon you this month in Jesus' name. Amen. That rain could be divine visitation. The book of Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. It says God could come as rain to come and pay you a visit. And you know yourself, 
If God pays you a visit, definitely, what else can you ever need? Because each time God pays somebody a visit, it will be to give that fellow a blank check. He's going to say, hey, I've come to pay you a visit. What do you want? And when God asks you, what do you want? You know that you've got it made. That rain could be a sign of hope rising. In Job chapter 14, from verse 7 to 9, Job 14 from verse 7 to 9, the Bible says, if, if you cut down a tree, the tree is already cut down. It's already dry. Anybody looking at it will think there's no hope. Job chapter 14, 7 to 9. Said, but if, if the rain can just fall on that tree, uh, then it will begin to grow again. That rain means definitely an end to dryness. When rain falls, dryness is over. And God said, I will send rain. Not that I may send rain. He said, I will. That's why I said this passage is seriously prophetic. He is saying, at least to us, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the redeemed Christian church of God, God will send rain. Amen. And when God uses the word, I will, you mean that one is settled. There's no doubt about it. It's not going to change his mind. That's, why, that's what he means by saying, I will. Which is why I'm going to encourage us today to pray like we have never prayed before. You see, because when you read Jeremiah 33, verse 3, Jeremiah 33, verse 3, when he said, call on me, he used that word again, will. I will answer. Not I may. I will answer. The same will that he said, that he used when he said, I will send rain, is the same will that he used when he said, I will answer. And so, I am going to end now so that you can have enough time to really call on him for rain. Whatever kind of rain you want, material, physical, marital, mental, spiritual, ask him for rain. He will send rain. So I, I don't think I really need to beg those of you who have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ to do so. You see, because the, one of the passages I mentioned earlier on, God can send rain on one part and keep another part dry. The elders in Africa, they have a saying, rain can beat one part of a tree and leave the other side dry. You know what that means? There could be two children of the same mother. There could be a set of twins. God can rain on one and leave the other dry. What's going to make the difference? It is a question of who belongs to him and who does not. So if you want to be the one upon whom the rain will fall, and you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ. Do so now. Do so now. Because God is about to send the rain. So if you want to give your life to Jesus. If you are in the church setting. Run to the altar. 
If you're at home, cry unto God all the same. And ask Jesus Christ to save your soul and let his blood wash away your sins. And those of us who are already children of the living God, please let's intercede for those who are giving their life to Jesus Christ, wherever they may be. Ask that the one who saved your soul will save their own souls also. So that the blood of Jesus Christ can wipe away their sins, so that when the rain begins to fall, they will not be left out. Shall we pray? Call on the Lord for a few minutes. Call on him for salvation. Call on him for restoration if you are backsliding. It's only your sin that can hinder you from partaking of these showers of blessings that the almighty God is about to release upon his own. Call on him for salvation, please. Call on him for restoration. And brethren, even if for only 30 seconds more, intercede for everyone surrendering his or her life to Jesus Christ now. And say, Lord, please receive them. Save their souls. Have mercy, O Lord. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. My Father and my God, I want to thank you once again for your word. Thank you because you have spoken. And when once you speak, it is done. You said that those who will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. All those who are coming to you now, Father, please receive them. Have mercy on them. Cleanse them in your blood. Save their souls, Lord. And write their names in the book of life. As many as are backsliders that are returning to you today, please, Lord, restore them to fellowship. So that when the rain is falling, they will not be left out. And please, Lord God Almighty, I'm standing in the gap for all your children today. As they cry unto you, for showers of blessing, pour it upon us abundantly. Amen. Let the rain fall Amen. and let your name be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, those of you who have given your life to Jesus Christ, congratulations. I rejoice with you. The Almighty God who said that if you come through Him, He won't cast you out he will not fail in his promise so if you will contact me by sending me your names your address and your prayer request i promise you i'll be praying for you and i will advise you to look for a redeemed christian church of god near you you will find one i'm sure within few minutes distance talk to the pastor there Tell him you gave your life to Jesus and you want to know what to do next. And they will tell you. God bless you. As for the rest of us, I want to encourage you that to spend quality time today crying to God. Father, send your rain. Send your rain upon me. Send your rain upon my family. Send your rain upon all my projects. Send your rain upon my church. Send the rain, physical, material, mental, spiritual. Pour fresh oil on me from heaven, and I will glorify your name forever. And he will answer your prayers in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord.